morning. morning. Is there any place you'd rather be than in worship this morning? Amen. Amen. April 15th in a snowstorm. I think you're all fibbing me. You'd rather be at the beach. That's just my opinion. Tell me if I'm wrong. Stuff going on. If you are a visitor, please grab one of the visitor cards. They're in the pew in front of you there. And if you would fill that out, well, we'd love to acknowledge that you are here uh, visiting us in worship. And out here at the visitor's desk, if you drop it off, you will get a coffee cup, or a coffee mug, and in it's all kinds of uh, information about the church and the ever-important junk food, because we are Methodists and food must be involved. Um, a special offering this month is for in-gathering. Um, if you'd like to just put it in your memo or use one of the envelopes in the back of the pews, that would be fine. Um, okay, Comedy Cafe is the 20th. How many of you all know what Comedy Cafe is? Raise your hand. Raise it tall so people can ask you. If you're planning on going this year, raise your other hand. Okay, very good. I'll tell you what, I thought I was going to be out of town, but I am actually not going to be out of town. And so I would like to um, host a table. So I am looking for actually um, two eight people table that I can sit in the middle of. So I'm looking for 16 friends, well 15 after me. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking for 15 friends that would like to join me at the tables and we'll all sit together and, and uh, uh, that would be terrific for Comedy Cafe. That is this Friday, the 20th. It starts at 7 o'clock. If you would like to sit with me, uh, the tickets are $8 a piece and just let me know because I'm going to put all of our names down and turn them in together so that we all sit together. Um, Mr. Fetter, you have something for us. Uh, we'll be meeting tonight at our home. Uh, Mary Jane and I are hosting a study with Max Locato called Max on Life. We've still got room for a couple more people. And if too many people come, we'll fit you in anyway. There you go. Okay, this after, after church today at 1030, assuming that uh, Reverend Bill Poland makes it here from Des Moines, uh, we are to have our church conference um, to decide the, um, the new alignment with Delhi and Buck Creek. Um, if so, if everybody would be here at 1030, that would be awesome. Um, there will be a little bit of question and answer time before the vote. And I think that's all we got, y'all. Let's set our hearts and minds right and let us worship together.
What is this peace, Lord, which you have promised? Is it only a lack of chaos? Is it a promise that we shall never hunger or thirst? Will we be rid of all our enemies? Does it mean that we shall never know want? Lord, lead me to your peace, which does not mean any of these things, but does promise you will be with me through it all. Amen. Please join me in the opening prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, Holy Lord, in grace we share in victory. But in life we so often forget when our daily challenges seem overwhelming. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. When our fears are debilitating, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Whenever we face grief, anxiety, or pain, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Help us to remember, Lord, that all things are possible because the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. As we have received grace and love in Jesus Christ, let us share Christ's peace with one another.
The scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 through 8. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord.
You can come closer to me if you really want to. Okay, so how many really were in your snuggly pajamas this morning that if you'd had your way, you could have stayed in your flannels and wrapped up in your blanket and just come that way to church? Yeah, uh, let's be honest. How many of you? Yeah, all right. So we really don't know where Mother Nature is hiding, but she is going to show up. But you know, there's something about being in our flannel pajamas and wrapped up maybe in a cuddly blanket, you know, at night or with your teddy bear that kind of gives you, <sighs> you know what I mean? So like, and you know, if the, some of the adults don't relate to that, then maybe it's a special food like uh, a dove's ch piece of chocolate. <laughs> or a good cappuccino coffee. <sighs> or, or for me, it's banana cream pie. <laughs> oh yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So it's, it's peace. It gives us that satisfaction of <sighs> letting our breath out and being comfortable. So that's why I brought my blankie. I didn't have flannel pajamas I could wear. I actually don't own flannel pajamas. And some of the flannel pa or pajamas I have, I couldn't have worn. So anyway, but I brought my teddy bear with me. And as I prepared for today's sermon, someplace along the line in the middle of the week, I started looking up everything about praise, because I was thinking I was giving a children's sermon about praise. And then yesterday morning, I looked up my notes and it said, peace. And I'm like, oh, Pastor Phil would have been really excited if we'd all come in praising God when he thought I was preaching on peace. So anyway, I've got my praise sermon. I'll, I'll, I'll rehearse for him. But anyway, one of the passages I wanted to share with you from the Bible is, don't be anxious about anything. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Jesus Christ. So, when you get frustrated, or, or you can't sleep at night, what brings you peace? Do you have a nightlight? night light? Do you have some, do you have a special blanket? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually like to take my pillow along with me and my husband says, you can't take your pillow, so I usually grab a blanket. Um, so anyway, even adults need something for comfort. And I was, as I was researching peace, do any of you know the symbols for peace? Yeah. Peace, that's right. That was one of them. Very good. We also have the symbol for peace that was really popular when some of our folks were younger <laughs> in, the, in one of their transition periods. Um, the symbol of peace, yeah, there you go. And then if you remember, as you come into our church, we have the dove. And that's one of our symbols also of peace. But as I was doing some researching, and I want you kids to practice with me, I'll put my teddy bear down for just a little while. One of the things I came across that I thought was really, really cool is the sign language for peace. And so, do you know what it is? No? Okay. So, it's sometimes, you know, when people get really nervous, they do this, put their hands together, and they just put one hand inside the other. But the symbol for peace is like this, and then you take your hands and you put it the opposite way, okay? But then you go like 
this. So I was thinking, you know, as I lay in bed some nights, I always have to find my inner peace before I can go to sleep. So it means praying for all my kids, all my grandkids, my friends, anybody that's sick, praying for my husband, uh, doing all my prayers. And then, then I praise God for all the blessings that he's given me. And then I have to get that inner peace. So I take a breath. I relax, and I'm thinking, what a wonderful way to find peace. Clasping your hands, clasping your hands, and turning it all over to God. So, I want you to say a prayer with me. If you want to all stand and join hands. Thank you, Lord. We just ask you to ask your, to put your arms around us and to, to feel your warmth and to let us know that, that you are with us, that you will give us the peace that we need every day as we pray for warmer weather, for our friends, for health, and for our family. So just continue to wrap your arms around us and let us all feel that you're at peace. Amen. Okay, ready? As we move into our second week of our series, He is Risen, So What? We have our second theme scripture for, for this time. From 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 16. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good deed. And if you notice the the design, the, the fancy embroidery around our Bible, we've used the pictures that the kids uh, drew during Easter. <clears throat> and you can see on top there's, there's a scripture uh, that we asked them to just draw what they heard. And you know something? I think Timothy's got it right, because when you look at some of these drawings, absolutely, these kids get it. The scripture is something that we can learn from, and it is easily understood, even through the eyes of a child. Uh, for our gospel reading this morning, I'd like to invite Reverend Bill Poland forward. He is a former assistant to the bishop, and he now has a new job title, which all of a sudden escapes me, which probably isn't good right now. Um, <clears throat> but we are in a place of grace, and we're praying about peace, so we're going to be okay. Um, so, uh, but he has to do with church vitality and, and new church uh, worshiping bodies. And he is going to read our gospel for us. Thanks, Pastor Phil. Director of New Communities of Faith is the, is the title. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to listen with me for the word of God. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, 
they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, after the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them, though the doors were locked, Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The word of God for the people. This morning I've had a couple of people come up and they're blaming me for the weather. They said, do you remember a couple of weeks ago when our friends Tom and Connie were returning home and I prayed for snow? I want you to know I still find that funny. And if I had that kind of pull, seriously, I would be better looking. But anyway, y'all let's pray, shall we? Holy and loving God, we thank you so much for this time you've given us to be here in this warm place, together with an outstanding family. And Lord, we just ask you please to set aside all the distractions of our world. Lord, we place so many barriers between you and and us. Help us now to lay them low so that we can truly be a listening people, Lord, listening for your still and quiet voice. And as I lead this time, Lord, I ask you, please allow me to diminish so that you are revealed all the more. Lord, we love you. Amen. <clears throat> the disciples are in a room behind a locked door, and they're hiding. Jesus had just been crucified. There had just been calls for crucifixion. There has been violence. There has been blood. And they are hidden behind locked doors. I hope no one finds us here. And Jesus suddenly stands in their midst and goes, peace be with you. How many of y'all think there was peaceful? Seriously. If I was there, it would have been one of these things, right? Peace be with you. Seriously? Boo. Okay. So Jesus palms in and he says, peace be with you. And what's the very first thing he does? He says, here, look, my hands, see my side. He goes to disciples and presents his wounds of sacrifice for our sanctification, for our salvation. He says, look and see, right? And then he says, peace be with you. And and he bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. Now, Thomas wasn't there. We don't know why Thomas wasn't there. That's probably a whole other message. But... When they find Thomas, they said to him, we've seen Jesus. We, we saw his hands in his side. And Thomas says, oh, well, yeah, right. I'll believe that when I see it, right? That's a natural human reaction, isn't it? Every fall, Dennis Porter comes to me and says, this is the cowboy's year. <laughs> and every year I say, I'd have to see that to believe it. Right, Dennis? <laughs> He's ignoring me. Okay. <clears throat> so then, a week later, they're back in the upper room. And I find it curious again. They are locked behind closed doors. They are still in fear. And Jesus pops back in and says, Peace be with you. Got you again. And then he turns to Thomas and he says, Look. See my hands. See my side. And Thomas touches 
And then he says, oh, my Lord and my God. And from that point forward, everyone calls him Doubting Thomas. But can I point out that that which the other disciples received the week before was the exact same thing that Thomas received. So I don't think it was just the Thomas when he said, blessed are you who have seen and believe, but how much greater blessed are those who will not see and yet believe. He was talking to all the disciples. And who was he talking about? He's talking about the generations to come. He's talking about you and me. He's talking about the pathway from there to here, from father to son, from neighbor to neighbor, from friend to friend, as the story is told for us here, so that we, though we don't get to touch the scars, we believe. What is this peace that Jesus keeps offering to his disciples? Well, according to the dictionary, peace is a freedom from disturbance or violence. It is quiet and tranquility, and I'm sure it's all of that. But I believe that what Jesus is offering is something even greater. Remember that the disciples are hiding in fear behind locked doors. They're living in the midst of a physical threat and a city in chaos. This peace that Jesus is offering them is, an, is based upon their faith and is the assurance of our hope. Our salvation has come in crucifixion and our eternal hope is assured in resurrection. This is not the end of the story. Whatever it is that you are afraid of, from whatever you are hiding, wherever is your anxiety, there is another side to this. And Jesus will walk with us there. This is a mighty peace. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Do you understand? Jesus has offered us his very own perfect peace. And it's not as the world gives. Jesus expects no reciprocation. It is perfect peace freely given. In our human condition, we have a tendency to misunderstand what it is that is a real tragedy. Have you ever thought about that? We seem to make a tragedy of, out of everything. Uh, Comedian Tim Hawkins tells this story, and I, I really like it. He tells the story of, of him and his wife taking their teenage daughter to the mall, okay? And when they get to the mall, <coughs> the friends that she's supposed to be meeting there have not yet arrived, okay? And it goes something like this. The daughter goes into this, this terrible brokenness. Oh, no, they're not here. I will have to be waiting on the curb for them to show up. Bah. Question, side note, personal query. What does a uh, on the back of a word do to it? Yeah. I tried to find out. It's not a noun, it's not an adjective, it's not a proverb. I'm not even sure what a proverb is. <laughs> Pronoun, that's what I meant. <laughs> See, my education is faulty. But what is it about kids that put a uh on the back of things and it's supposed to have some new meaning? I'll be here waiting alone. Uh, I could be shopping. Uh, the whore. And his wife turns to her in a beautiful mother-daughter mother -daughter bonding moment and, and, and looks into her tear-filled eyes and says, honey, I know this, this is the worst. And it would have been a beautiful moment, except seriously, this is the worst. This is the worst thing that can happen to us. About eight years ago, there was a mine in Chile, and there was a cave-in, and 33 men were trapped three miles from the entrance, a half a mile underground. And I'm sure they were sitting down there going, man, this is so bad. This is bad. We, we don't have enough food. There may not be enough water. And, and his friend says, I say, I know. We, we, we could run out of air. This is so bad. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, at least it's not like, you know when you're at the mall. 
and your friends are late and you have to wait when you could be shopping. Yeah, I say that's just the worst. <clears throat> I apologize to anybody of Hispanic descent that was annoyed with my uh, accent. No actual minors were hurt in that humor. <clears throat> Seriously, we need to come to terms with our tragedy people. We have a tendency to say that <clears throat> a fender bender is as tragic as a doctor telling us some bad news. We have got to come to terms with our peace. We've got to come to terms with our tragedy. Christ will be with us through it all, big and small, but we need to put it into context. Some years ago, there was a contest for an artist to paint a picture that represents peace. And of course, they, they got lots of landscapes and, and fruit baskets, right? Because fruit means peace. When it's baked in a pie, I find peace. <laughs> okay? And so they got all these, and, and, and they were beautiful pictures, but I want you to see the winning picture. Okay? This is the winning picture of peace. Does that look peaceful to you? You can almost feel the wind blowing and the waves crashing and the lightning striking. I mean, how would you like to be out in that? That doesn't seem peaceful at all. Can you see where peace is in the midst of the picture? Take a close look. Do you see the little bird in the crevice of the cliff face? The storm rages around it, and yet the little bird sits with its children in the nest, and they know peace. This is the kind of peace that Christ offers us. The storms may rage, but we shall know safety in eternity. God is with us. And we have a choice in how we choose to view our situation. We can stand against the storm for what good it would do. Or we can find peace like this mother bird showing wisdom and choosing just to trust in the rock. Psalm 131 verse 2. But I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with with its mother, like a weaned child, I am content. A child rest, resting safely in its mother's arms or its grandpa's. I just thought I would throw that out there. <coughs> content. This is the peace we are offered. The peace and contentment of a child, a babe in the arms of one who loves and cherishes it so. When the great RMS Titanic went down in the cold waters of the North Atlantic, there were 2,200 people on board, but yet only 700 would survive. As the ship was going down, I'm sure there were many on the deck counting the lifeboats and saying, there just is not enough room. How would you like to be on that deck? Can you imagine knowing that only one in three would survive? It is said as the ship went down that the band continued to play. They played on the deck until the deck in which they were standing slipped below the waters.
provided they continue to play. They played to restore reason from panic for those people on the boat, to save those that could be saved, and to remind the others of the assurance of our hope in Jesus' resurrection, and to provide peace for those who were to be lost, including themselves. This is truly the peace that Jesus offers to us, the peace that should overcome our fear. Did you recognize the song that the band was playing? Reportedly, it was Near My God to Thee, which is number 528 in our hymnals, and we'll be singing it together in a moment for our response hymn. This is the great blessing of faith. Don't you get it? Whatever happens, whatever befalls us, it's not the end of the story. In faith, we know without question our story ends in victory. We will be upon the kingdom table with our feet beneath it in the blessed company of our Savior. And with all those who have gone before and all those who have yet to come, we will be a community together singing praise. So when the car has a flat tire, no peace. When you have a conflict with a friend, no peace. Or when the doctor gives you a difficult diagnosis, no peace. We are not abandoned as orphans. Christ walks with us every step, every breath, every joy, every tear. And there is another side. This is the peace, Christ's own peace, that is offered to us. In the midst of our fear and doubt, Jesus constantly compels us and reminds us to be at peace. This is a spiritual practice and a sign of spiritual maturity. John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So who do you know? Who do you know right now in the midst of chaos or despair? Who do you know right now that would be blessed with this gift of peace? Remember what our job is as disciples. We're invited first to come and see. Find your rest. Here. Go and tell. Go and share this amazing gift, this wonderful blessing of God's own peace with your neighbor and your friend and your fellow man. Amen.
Please be seated. Now we come to my favorite part of worship when we get to act like family and share the joys and concerns of our lives. What joys and concerns do we have as a congregation today? I will lift George White. I will lift George White. Uh, he was uh, placed on hospice last weekend. Um, Dave was able to get over there with communion, but when I got there, he was sleeping and I chose not to wake him. Um, but let us keep him and, and his family, uh, Virginia and also uh, uh, Florence and, and Helen. Let's keep them all in prayer. Yes? I'd like prayers for my brother Mark, who is battling bladder cancer. And he will be having surgery on Tuesday to remove the bladder and prostate. Okay. Brother Mark, who has bladder cancer, and he's having surgery, it sounds pretty serious, on Tuesday. So let's keep Mark in prayer. Others? Yes, sir. Um, the family of Bob Booth, he had cancer and he passed, and his wife, Janet, is a Lensman. And so prayers for her. He's happy. She's okay. So prayers for Bob Booth, who passed away this last week, yes. and his wife, Janice. Janet is a Lundsman. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Oh. And so, what's her name? Minor. The Minor family who lost a son at a pretty young age. The second son they've lost. Lord, in your mercy. Let us keep them in prayer. Others? Yes, sir. Jackie's going to get a new knee. Jackie, I think that means you have to lay still for just a little while. I'm not sure how that's going to work out for you. <laughs> Blessings and healing grace. Okay, others? Not missing anyone, am I? Y'all, let's pray, shall we? Holy and loving God, we thank you for this wonderful body you have given us to come together, Lord. A church that prays together, loves together. Lord, hear our voices and our prayers as we lift up those that we, we pray for healing grace, Lord. Be, be gentle with them, Lord, and let your healing grace be known. Work with the hands of the doctors and nurses and all who provide care. And for the family members that are anxious, Lord, let them know your peace. And Lord, for those who are struggling right now in a time of grief, grief and loss, Lord, we ask you, please, to bring your comfort upon them. Let them know their loved one is, oh, is safe and secure with their feet beneath your table. Lord, we pray for comfort. And Lord, for those in our community who are struggling right now in a time of desperation or despair, homelessness or poverty, Lord, for any and all who are struggling, be made known to them, Lord. Let them know your peace and your comfort. And Lord, in a world where violence seems to just continue, Lord, we pray for peace. We talk of peace. Lord, we seem to try to work for peace. But yet violence just seems to be a part of our human condition. Lord, help us. Help us to learn that if we loved you more, and we experienced your image in all of humanity, Lord, there would be no need for violence evermore. Let us learn to live in a world that loves each other. Lord, this is our prayer. We love you. Amen. And now if we can have our ushers come forward, we will return to God a portion of the abundance we have received.
Gracious and loving God, you are the source of every good and perfect gift. The first breath we take, the people who love us and those um, whom we love, all of these are a gift from you. And most of all, you did not withhold your own son, but have freely given Jesus to us and for us. And so now we ask with thanksgiving that you would receive these gifts, the fruit of the labor, our labor, and the blessings of your spirit. More than that, we pray that you would receive our lives. May our very living become an offering to you. As you love and live in us, may we love and live for you. We pray this with the boldness of children, as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, Please be seated. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. I present Peg Kennecke who comes seeking professing membership from the Greeley United Methodist Church. I want you to know that Peg asked me, um, she said to me, she says, I, I don't have to be in front of everybody, did I? And I promised her I'd make it short, so I'm going to limit everybody to just one question apiece. <laughs> okay? I'm there for you. 
As a member of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to Christ through, your, through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. Members of the household of God, commend this person to your love and care and do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and to perfect them in love. Let us pray together. We give thanks for all that God... And now if you can just kind of spin around so everybody, y'all meet your new sister and say hello, Peg Kennedy. You, you can go now. Y'all, it has been a wonderful morning of worship and how blessed am I who have been able to spend it with you all this morning. Thanks for coming out in a little rugged weather. Um, remember that we have uh, in about 26 minutes, we have our church conference here in the sanctuary. Uh, with that, let us pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you that you have brought us together here and worship this day. And Lord, we are filled. We are filled with your word. We are filled with your spirit. And now, Lord, help us to therefore go and tell your story in, in the places that are dark and broken in our world. Lord, lead our steps into those who need to experience your light. Lord, let us be your light bringers into this generation. Create in us, Lord, to be vessels of your spirit so that others will experience you loving them through us. And Lord, let them say there is something special about Jesus. Oh, Lord, let them wish to know you more. This is our prayer. Amen.